This section, verse 57 through 60, says, find the constants A and B such that the function is continuous on the entire real. So let's look at 58 and see how we can figure this out. So uh, this is a piecewise function. It's the one that has two halves, okay, when x is less than 0 and when x is greater than or equal to 0. We want this to be continuous on the entire real number line. So if it's continuous, that means that these must meet at uh, the point where it changes. So at 0, they must meet. Now this one, if we just try and plug in 0 to the first part of the function, we get that undefined issue. Okay, right? Because we've got 4 times 0, which is 0 over 0. But let's isolate this in terms of limits. Um, the limit as we approach 0 of sine of x over x is what? 1. So the limit of this top part as we approach 0 of 4 sine of x over x is 4. So what that means is if this piecewise function is going to be continuous, the second piece has to be equal to 4 at 0. Okay, a minus 2x has to be equal to 4 when x equals 0. Because the two pieces have got to meet. So let's plug in 0 for x. That leaves us with just a equals 4. That makes this function continuous. Because other than at 0, sine of x over x is continuous everywhere. And 4 minus 2x is a polynomial, it's a linear function, so it's continuous everywhere. So we just had to make sure that those limits matched at that boundary point. Right, if a had been anything but 4, this function would not be continuous. If A were 2, then they wouldn't meet, so you'd have a jump discontinuity. Right. At 0. Only at 0. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. It could. It could. But it would always, yeah, it would always be one. Yeah. Okay, let's look at another one. Let's look at uh, 60 because 60 is a little bit more difficult because it puts it in um, general terms here. We've got a lot more A's floating around. So let's think about this piecewise function. Okay, this is not the two halves of the graph. This one has when x is not equal to a and when x is equal to a. So this is the case where it's a single point. Okay, it's a single point. The entire function looks like one thing, but then there's a hole. And at that hole, apparently we need the y value to be equal to 8. So holes are created by rational functions when we cancel things. So x minus a, or excuse me, x squared minus a squared factors into x plus a times x minus a. So the x minus a's cancel. We are left with x plus a. So at the point a, x plus a must be equal to 8 because that 8 in the second piece is plugging in the hole. So x plus a must equal 8 when x equals a. So what makes this a little bit more difficult is that it's they don't give us the x value. They leave it in general terms. But it's really not that bad. Just like That means a is four. Oh, x can be anything. Yeah. Okay. So just like we we just plugged in zero for x in the last problem, so this time we're going to plug in a 
for x, and y'all right. Okay, 2a is equal to 8, so a is equal to 4. So 4, in this case, again, is the answer. What, didn't we just get 4? Yeah, we got 4 again. Okay, so we can go back and we can rewrite. Let's rewrite this uh, piecewise function so you can see what's going on. Uh, x squared minus 16 over x minus 4 when x is not equal to 4 and 8 when x is equal to 4. That's what this scenario ends up being. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and this is something I, I wouldn't say that I'm necessarily I've seen problems similar to this on the AP exam. And this is one of those questions that they're not expecting every single person who takes the AP exam to know the answer to. Uh, this is probably, I would qualify this as a five level question. Uh, most people that make fives are the people that are gonna be able to, to answer this question. But at the same time, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying that it's completely unaccessible some time at the end, come back to it, okay? Come back to it and do it then, all right? So take a couple minutes here and do 57 and 59, okay? They're very similar to these.